Hey guys, what a wonderful opportunity. I've got to come and talk to you a little bit about God's Word. It's always a blessing to study God's Word. I want us to look at Galatians chapter 5 for just a few minutes, and we're going to talk about some wonderful things. The first thing we need to look at and understand, though, is God expects us to bear fruit. In fact, God expects us to be judged by the fruit we bear and to judge others by the fruit that they bear. Now, let's talk about that for a moment. What, what does he mean? Well, if you go out into an orchard and you pull a big juicy apple off of a tree, that's an apple tree. Now, we would know if you went out to the same orchard and you reached up and you grabbed this big, fat, juicy orange and say, man, this is a wonderful orange, and turn to the orchard owner and said, man, it's a great orange. And they said, man, that's the best apple tree bearing oranges ever. And you, what? No, it's an orange tree. Or if you reach up and you grab a pear, be like, well, that's a beautiful pear. And they said, that's the best apple tree I've ever seen. You're like, no, no, it, no, it's, it's a pear tree. You can't, you can't get pears from an apple tree or oranges from an apple tree or apples from a pear tree. So when you walk in an orchard or in somebody's yard or out in the woods, we can see what kind of tree that is. And a lot of the trees that bear nuts and things like that, you can go out in the woods and look and say, hey, that's an oak tree and that's this kind of oak tree. Because I can tell by the nut that it bears and, and where it lives and all kinds of things. Well, God's going to look at us the same way. In fact, in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16, those fruits, those works, those deeds that, that we're supposed to bear are to be so vibrant in the world around us that people see them and praise God. Isn't that an amazing thing? But what are these fruits? Obviously, we're not some big oak tree in the woods or some apple tree in a vineyard or some cherry tree. No, we're Christians. So we're not bearing apples or pears or oranges. But whatever we bear, people can come to us and they can see what we are and they can gain some kind of benefit or, or nutrients or sustenance from what we bear. So let's look at what we're supposed to bear. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 as Paul is discussing with our brethren in Galatia about what kind of fruit and what kind of person we're supposed to be, the things that are supposed to show up in our lives, contrasted with the things that show up in people that live worldly lives. So in verse 22, he says this about us. But the fruit of the, fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. So that means when somebody walks up to us, we're supposed to bear fruit. They, they should be able to pick from us love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That means when somebody walks up to you in your life, they should say, gain some kind of benefit from love or gentleness, or your long-suffering, or your self-control, or your kindness, something about you, they will gain that from you. And they can walk in your life and they can say, man, I can see all of these things. They belong to God. Now, that's the kind of fruit we're supposed to bear. Now, what does it mean to, to bear love? Well, to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That means from your inmost being, you're devoted to keeping His commandments. In Matthew chapter 22, we see the great command. And in 1 John 5, verses 2 and 3, we see that to love God is to keep His commands. We're also supposed to love one another. John 4, 1 John 4 is all about loving your brothers. Because Christ so loved us, we ought to love one another. and We ought to have that same kind of love. They should see that love. Now, that, that's ooshy-gooshy butterfly feeling. But the dedicated devotedness to serving others and giving them what they truly need. That kind of love. You know, we're supposed to bear, and people come from us, joy. An unexpressible amount of joy from being a Christian, from being God's child, from the things and the blessings that God has given us. They walk into our lives and they see pure, indescribable joy and rejoicing all the time. You also see this peace. This inner calmness, this calmness about your life. Our lives shouldn't be full of drama and stress and anxiety and world worry. It should be peace. Why? Because we've got God. He's overcome sin. He's had victory over the world. We belong to Him. He takes care of all of our needs. So there it is. 
They should see that kind of peace. Long-suffering or patience. I like the word long-suffering because it truly gives the idea of patience. It's an enduring patience. That you don't, you're not just patient, but you have the patience of Job. You have the ability to be patient for a long time with other souls, with their brothers and sisters in Christ, with things in your life. You're just overly patient. Not to the extent that it's a detriment to you, but you're just very, very patient. You're very, very kind and gentle. I'm going to put those two together because I see kindness and gentleness as putting others first. You see that ability that you're like, oh, you need something? Let me take care of that. Oh, you're hurting. How can I help you? What can I do for you? And then you're very gentle in how you handle those things. And I will stretch it to the point that when someone is erring or they're struggling or they need Christ or they need to obey the gospel or maybe it's a brother and sister in Christ who need to get right, you're very gentle with your words and your expression and how you come across. And then you go on to the idea of your faithfulness. Faithfulness. That you are trusting and obeying God all the time, no matter what. No matter what happens in your life, no matter what comes, they say, man, they're full of faith and goodness. You go on to Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10, it makes it clear, do not grow t weary of doing good. As you have an opportunity, do good even to those that are of the faith. Why? Because in due time, you will reap the harvest. Reap the harvest of what? Of doing good. Everlasting life. The blessings of being a child of God. You're always good no matter what. You seek to do the righteous good thing no matter what. And they see that in your life. And then you go on to the idea that the amount of self-control that you have. You have self-control with your words and your thoughts and your actions and your deeds. You're very self-controlled. Listen, somebody walks into your life and they benefit from the self-control. They benefit from the goodness. They benefit from the faithfulness. They benefit from the gentleness, the kindness, the love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering. They see that. It encourages them. It causes them to praise God. They, they see you from a distance and just observe your life. You're like, that's a Christian. How do I know? They're bearing these fruits, not these other worldly fruits that... In short, in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, is just the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, and the lust of flesh. That's all it's wrapped up into. You're not bearing those fruits. And we know what that looks like. We can look in the world. We can watch movies. We can listen to music. We can see our friends. We can see people at school. We can see how people interact and say, man, they're all about the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes. That's the only fruit they are bearing. And I can see it. I can see how they act and do, and it drives their actions. No, we don't bear that kind of fruit. Now, we see people who bear that fruit, and from the peace and the joy and the gentleness and the faithfulness and kindness and goodness, we take them the gospel. We show them the fruit of being a Christian, and we let that fruit we bear affect their lives and influence their lives. But that's God's expectation for us as Christians. God expects to look out into the world and see his children bearing these fruit. He expects that fruit that we bear to cause others to come to him, to praise his name, to seek his glory, to want to know the gospel. And those are the things that we're supposed to be focused on. No matter what, no matter what happens in life, we need to be focused on these things. Because God has rid us from everything else. In Christ, we have the forgiveness of sins. We've been baptized and circumcised from that way of living. We're now free and clean and ready to go to bear these good fruits. And God nourishes our soul with His Word and drives us to be more mature in Him so that we may be able to bear these fruits. So that's my challenge to you. Go back over that list. Ask yourself, what are the things that I need to improve on? What's my weakest strength? What's my greatest strength? And then finally, the last question is, what can I do to make these better? What can I do to bear the fruit even more so that others can praise God and I can be that much more of a mature Christian and glorify God in all that I say and do? Listen, I thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to sit down, hang out, talk about the Word of God, spend some time talking about bearing fruit and being the kind of Christians that we're supposed to be so that we can grow in Him. Thank you for your time. God bless and always put Him first.